if you're installing a c-notch kit for your c10 you need to watch this video if it's a three-quarter ton i highly advise you to watch this video i'm going to share with you the struggles i've had and this huge obstacle i've been dealing with All right, if you're still watching, then you're committed. You want to know what's going on with this kit. So I'm going to show you. Now, I made a video doing that side. That side took me about a day and a half. Reason being is these frames are so thick. These frames are so thick. That's what she said. <laughs> so installing this side, you really want to practice patience when you're taking metal out here because you can't put it back. Well, you can weld it back, but you can't necessarily put it back right away. Uh, what I did is I cut, you can see my original scribe line right here. Well, I kept on cutting and I kept on cutting and I kept on cutting to the point where I felt that, well, something's wrong. And what was wrong, this guy, your freaking trailing arm for your rear axle. I kept on hitting it on the back section here. It would not line up and I removed the rivets, try to get a little better fitment, till I just realized that, well, I can't do nothing with this, this thing in my way, but it's necessary, you have to have this. And I am so hung up that I don't wanna mess up the geometry of that rear axle, because this is what keeps it in center. So, the importance of walking away from a project when, you're not, when it's not going your way, like that guy back there, you got to have that control. You got to have that self-control. What I did was is took my mind off of it. Started thinking about other options. It took me a little bit to find that bracket, but I insulated my shop, trimmed it all out. Now it's nice and warm in here in the wintertime. I mean, it's been so long. Look at my, you check out my last video. Check how long my hair is. It's been that long. I have been researching and avoiding putting that in for that amount of time. It, I'm telling you, I was frustrated. Other people, they don't. They don't get frustrated like that. They just probably just punch through it. The, me, I go squirrel. Squirrel. This is the bracket that I'm telling you about. This one's a little different. Now they have about three, I think they have two variances of this bracket. Uh, this being the third one. I don't know if GM came out with this or not, but it is definitely an aftermarket piece. Now you get on the internet, you don't really find too much support on this kit. In this part now what it does now what it does is if I line them up here the way it would sit on the frame you can tell these two pieces are angled the original piece is not angled I kept on hitting it right in this spot here in this corner and I, I got to the point where I was gonna start cutting this piece out and I knew I had to stop you guys heard a word I've said uh yeah, enough. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I heard it too. <laughs> so this piece right here, let me get out of the way here. So this piece right here, you can tell it's canted. It's cut at an angle where the stock ones are usually straight up and down. Well, hard words. Anyway, this is what's gonna allow me to keep a true geometry. They move this back a little bit so you could sit and still have good true geometry. Now, I don't think this is gonna work for a solid um, arm, the trailing arm, but regardless, if you're putting a C-notch on your frame and you're sticking with the solid trailing arm, you're gonna run into issues anyways because it's gonna hit your freaking pumpkin in the back, the rear diff cover, and when you lower it, it's gonna bind up. It's gonna be a lot of problems. So get the adjustment arm that comes with the CC pit, P kit. Uh, that's a total weird word, isn't it? <laughs> that is a freaky word. <laughs> and well, I've got that. So I'm not too worried about now. I'm going to get this installed. I'm just going to tape this whole thing, video it, show you the struggles I have because I still don't know if this is going to work or not. Uh, I really hate doing this because like I said, the three quarter ton frame, it is extra thick. It takes a long time to drill through. And these rivets, I told you in my last video, the rivets are a huge pain in the butt. Well, let's get to it.
Well, this is finished product. After I got this bracket off right here, everything just started fitting like it should. The biggest part of this project, like I said, is the rivets. I had to cut and drill out a few of them down the bottom here. You're going to utilize rivets that are in the frame for this bracket. So there's about two of them down here in sync that you're gonna to have to take out. Obviously, you're gonna to have to take out the ones on the bottom here. So this did line up, it did fit. It fit pretty easy. Once I got those rivets out, it, it all went together fairly easy. I was, uh, I was quite shocked. If it wasn't for the rivets being such a pain in the butt to get out, this would, uh, this would have been a lot easier. Well, now that I've got both sides done and everything's all fitted together, it's snug. And the reason why it's snug is because I don't want this back frame to sag down. Now I can get rid of this jack and let it sit. And then I will go through one by one, taking these bolts, putting some Loctite on there, and then running them through. I do plan on putting a bead right here on the outsides. I did, uh, I did decide to go with the nut side facing down on these. I didn't do that on the other side, but when I go to Loctite, I will probably reverse those bolts to go down. If this was to come apart in any shape or form, which I don't think it will because I do plan on actually putting a, a, bead, a little, little tack weld on the end of these so none of this will come loose. But in the case that it would, at least I would have a bolt still dangling down in there even the nut is gone. Uh, one thing I don't like about this, uh, this, uh, this bracket here is the hardware. I would probably swap it out with some better stuff and I may just do that. Reason why I don't like this hardware is because it's fine thread. So you can't really give it the ugga, ugga, ugga. And there's probably a torque spec that goes with this, but they didn't provide me one. So when I found out given a couple ugga, uggas, I wind up shearing off those fine threads like there's no one's business. So if I was you, take the hardware, swap it out for some coarse thread, and I think you should be fine with that. Now, this is not an easy job. This, uh, just this right here, even having all this done already, that was, that was, I'd probably collectively say on this side alone, I've got about, I don't know, I'll just be conservative and say six hours because I couldn't tell the difference between like when I, how much time I had in it before. Uh, but yeah, it's just, it is what it is. It's going to take time. This threw, threw me through a loop. If I find the part number or something that I could get you guys to purchase this, I know I got this through CCP, uh, Classic Performance, and they're the same people that provided, that I purchased the, the suspension from. They sell this part too. You could probably find it elsewhere, but this one, it worked out pretty good. You could see through the bottom that, that all the things lined up. The the bracket aligned up really well with the original holes for the rivet joints. I only had to drill two extra holes, well actually two holes on the bottom, and I did have to drill this one out here. Time will tell when I get the suspension on and I get the rear end built. We'll try the, try the arm out and see how it tracks and see what the angle is and if it's aggressive or not. So I appreciate you guys watching. I'll see you on the next episode.